Welcome. Welcome to today's live learning. How do I say what I want to say? That's been a lifelong journey for me, for sure. Uh, so I'm excited to share with you uh, how, how do we say what we want to say. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of Answering the Call, our Facebook group, and also the creator of Wisdomary Leading. It's a way of knowing ourselves, understanding the world, and living in the world in alignment with who we truly are. So we're answering that call, that nagging, gnawing feeling, which says something's missing in my life, or there's something else available to me that I can't quite figure out what that is, or maybe it's just, for me, it was it was finally, uh, it was a version of enough is enough. I've done all this coaching, all this work, and I still wasn't happy. It's like, okay, so that's, that was the calling for me. To, to, to not settle for that and to, um, and to eventually discover what it was, which is what we're talking about here. All right, so today specifically though, how do I want, how do I let myself say what I want to say? So we're gonna explore having relationships that are ready for you to say what you wanna say, how to not be concerned about whether your relationships are ready, how to work with fear, which is often what gets in our way of saying what we want to say, and then how to know what you want to say. So, so, um, so, so, how do you have the relationships? So, because this is what a lot of people are concerned about. Gosh, if I say what I want to say, what's going to happen at work or with my loved ones? So, when I say uh, to say what you want to say, there's also a level of uh, like an overall context, like a bigger picture. So it's not just I get to say whatever I want to say because part of the reason we want to say what we want to say is because we want to be heard or we want to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, um, support a relationship in, in being better or support ourselves to live all out fully who we truly are. So we don't want to blow up relationships. I mean, sometimes we do, but I'm not going to talk about that today. So I, I'm, I'm proposing that you don't want to blow up relationships. So um, so to have relationships that are ready for what you want to say is important because that's part of being able to say what you want to say is that you're heard and not shunned. And, and sometimes we can be shunned. Uh, that's okay. Sometimes there are things that we want to say that we, that's worth the price. So I'm also not saying not that. But today specifically, it's more like how do I just live in my life the way I normally do, but yet say what I want to say. So how do we have the relationships to do that? Well, so we can check in. What is it I want to say? And how, and check in with ourselves. And then what do I think about that relationship? Is it at the level, the depth, the emotional intensity, the emotional availability to have this conversation or to say what I want to say. Um, so, uh, can it take and hold that level of conversation or whatever it is you're going to say? So, for example, in the workplace, let's say you want to say what you want to say and you and, and you want to say it to your boss or to the team uh, staff meeting or something, you can think, do I have the kind of reputation in this organization? To say what I want to say. Do I? Are these relationships intact in a way that that um, that I'm not making them wrong, or that I'm acting superior, or um, or that they're going to be so blown away? Like what happened to her? Or him? So sometimes we do need to build up the relationships first. So how do you do that? Well. You spend. You don't have to spend a lot of time, but you just make sure that you're, um, you know, caring about them, being interested in them. Maybe on the edges of talking about what it is you really want to say, so you can see how they respond to you broaching the subject. And so sometimes we do need to and want to build up the relationship to be able to handle the conversation. And then how do we not be concerned about whether your relationship is ready? So, um, so at some point we say, I'm, I'm, so, I mean, so let me think, let me think what I wanted to say about that. <laughs> how to not be concerned about whether your relationships are ready is, so, so there can be other times where 
the conversation is part of uh, what's necessary for the relationship to move forward. And so you, you don't have to think about it too much or be too concerned about whether your relationship is ready. And then another piece to this is to be paying attention to how the other person is responding. And then you can make course corrections, if you will, as you go along. So let's say you're saying what you want to say. Maybe it is in a staff meeting. You're going to stand up and say something. And you think maybe relationships are intact for that, or you're not sure that they are, but you're just ready to say it. Then you watch, you read the room, what we call reading the room. You look around, how are they taking this? What, and so then you can engage with them. How do you hear this? What are you hearing? So you can engage with them and, and um, invite them into the conversation. And so that's one way to not be concerned, is to know that you have the ability to shore up the relationship if the conversation or what you're going to say goes south for you. Um, let's see, what else could I say about that? Um, it's also being clear that the relationship's important to you, if it is. If it's not important to you, then of course, who cares what you say, how they receive it, that's not important to you. But if it is important to you, you want to keep a job or keep a relationship, then then that's what you can do is, is, um, is just check in with them. How, how are you hearing me? How's this going? And know that you can always go back and repair a relationship. Um, you know, one time I had a conversation with a colleague. We were selling a program together and I didn't think she was doing her part in, in um, helping us move this along. And so, and I was upset. I was mad, frankly. I was mad. <laughs> and we were meeting at a coffee shop. And so and, but I wanted to contain my emotions. I didn't want to harm the relationship, but I needed to say what I needed to say and to see what we could do to get on the same page about this. And so I just let her know up front, you know, that I'm pretty upset about this and so or, or, or angry. I might even say angry or distressed, whatever. Um, and, and I'm going to do my best to, to, to stay calm here. But if you sense I'm bothered, then that's right. That's accurate. So it's okay to, to uh, tell people um, that, you know, set it up in advance how you're feeling and what you're going to talk to people about. So that's another way to not be concerned about whether the relationship is ready by in the moment explaining what you're up to and how you're feeling. All right, now let's say uh, your your re relationships are fine, or you're set with the relationship part. So how do I say what I want to say? But I'm still afraid. How do I work with the fear? Well, a lot of this, you know, in general, which is you can take deep breaths when you're feeling afraid. You take deep breaths. Another way is to work with emotions, and, and here's one simple way to work with an emotion is that you uh, allow, you just allow it. You don't try to suppress it, you don't try to avoid it, and you just feel love for it. You allow it. And I know some people have a hard time with that word, feel love for it, but, but you can bring to mind something that you love. It could be a pet, it could be a, 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 a family member, um, and just let your heart feel that feeling of love, and then bring the fear into that or the other way around. Feel the fear and then bring that love into it. And that can take a while, but that starts transmuting the fear. So I'm not a big fan of feel the fear and do it anyway, so I'm not talking about just feeling the fear and doing it anyway. You do want to do something that helps transmute it or to be able to set it aside. Sometimes we can do that by recognizing, okay, yeah, I'm feeling kind of nervous here about this and taking some breaths and focusing on what it is you want to say and why, and feeling and bringing those, motion, those emotions forward. And then how to know what you want to say. So I find this a lot. I mean, our culture, I'm sorry to say, has really suppressed for most of us our ability to know ourselves and to know what it is we want to say. We've been so conditioned that the textbooks know what we need to know, that the experts know what we need to know. 
and uh, or our parents or our teachers or our bosses or our colleagues and for a great many of us it's been almost taught out of us that there's a deep knowing a deep song Francis Lucille who's a non-dual teacher said I heard him once say that that, e that what we each really want to do is find our song and just like the birds in the trees they don't care who's listening they don't care how it sounds they're just finding their song and singing it and I believe that's why every one of us is here on this planet we're here to connect with our song so to speak our version of a way of being that expresses who we truly are which is the love, the peace happiness the oneness that we are and then express it in our own unique way and that takes some being still we have to be still and we can and connect we can connect with our heart and ask ourselves what is my song what is it that I want to say and by say it could be expression or work or um, uh, something I want to bring into the world so ask the question that resonates for you and then focus on your heart area and ask it and be still for 10, 20 minutes, an hour. Um, and you very well probably won't get an answer then, but you keep coming back to that. You keep coming back to that. And then pay attention to what's happening in the world around you. What gets your attention? What gets your, <laughs> what gets your attention? What nudges you? What what, uh, what are you attracted to? And that will give you so many clues about what it is that your song is to sing. Let's see any other notes I had here. Um, well, another thing you can do, so what prompted this, uh, this uh, session today is the song Brave by Sarah Bareilles. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. And listen to that song. Let that song fill you up. Dance to it. Let yourself feel the freedom of that song. And it does take being brave to listen to ourselves, to know that that could take us somewhere that's out of the norm. And yet, frankly, I think that's what we're all here to do. We're all here to be out of the norm, not try to fit in. And try to fit in in a relationship standpoint. Yes, to fit in, to get along, but for each of us to express our own unique expression. And uh, so, uh, so, so. But anyway, so that's one way to free ourselves is by dancing and, and and you know doing wild and crazy dancing with our bodies so it gets comfortable to be out of control, and and then um, you know and then just you can build up. As, let's say what what it is you want to say is something really big. You think then you can build up to it. You know, just talk about some different things, some new things with people, and just get comfortable. Not do not talking about the way that you always talk about things. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. All right. So I'm gonna see if we have any questions or comments. I don't see anything. Oh, forgot to say. If you're here live, please let me know. Say hi. If you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay. If you have any comments or questions at any time, please put them in the comments, and I will come back and answer them. So if, uh, as I was preparing this a while ago, I was thinking about what I wanted to say, it dawned on me that some of you might want some one-on-one -on -one coaching with this. Um, like I said, it's been one of my issues throughout my life, and so I know what it takes. Um, all of this <laughs> know what it takes. And so I'm available for a complimentary 45-minute session where we can talk about what it would be like for you to find your song, for you to discover what it is you really want to express, what you're here to offer in the world. And I mean, to explore that and then to see if working with me or with someone else is appropriate and we could talk about that as well. But I'm happy to spend 45 minutes with you, a complimentary session on how to get started with this in your own life. And, um, and then we can explore also you know, whether some ongoing support with coaching or a course or something is, is uh, would be useful for you. And if you are interested in that, just please send me a message and we'll schedule something. Also, the, our next complimentary workshop is April the 17th at 1.30 Central. It's an hour and a half. And um, 
and we're going to focus on how to create, how creation actually happens. And so you can join us and discover the secret to creation, three elements of creation, and an expansion of your ability to receive guidance like from the universe for actions to take as you're being created. Okay, so today we explored how do I say what I want to say, having relationships that are ready for you to say what you want to say, how to not be concerned about whether your relationships are ready, how to work with fear, and how to know what to say. All right, thanks for being here today. Oh, I, let me look one more time, see if there are any comments. Oh, all right, so thanks again for being here uh, today. I look forward to seeing you again next week.